this is, this is, this is. Let's go, you guys. Let's go. Episode 475, kicking it off right now. Thanks for being part of it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing to the podcast. Thanks for sharing the podcast. That's probably the best thing you could possibly do, aside from just listening and, and, and checking it out every week yourself. But share it with a friend that might like punk rock, MXPX, might like one of the guests that's on. Maybe you called in. Call in and leave a voicemail. Let me know. Um, and then you want your family to hear that, and you can share that with your family. So call in. The number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. Uh, pick a topic. It could be about MXPX, punk rock, about world issues, world politics, whatever. You, you, you know, if you need advice on life, you know, it depends on what it is. If it's about playing bass, if it's about music, if it's about being creative, if it's about going out and getting things. I can do that. I can help you with that. So uh, give me a call. And uh, like I said, thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. We're getting going again. Um, it's been a busy a busy month with releasing Find A Way Home. All of that's been insane. And I'm still just on the press, just press circuit, just doing as many interviews as I possibly can and um, doing a lot of live Instagrams, live other things. So watch out for me there. Um, and if you know somebody that, that, that might be good, let me know. But um, like I say, you know, I just appreciate you guys checking it out. And, and thanks for all the love. All right. This, this episode right here, this is all about Find A Way Home, all about your voicemails about Find A Way Home, the first few reactions we got. And, and I'll, I'll just take some of those calls. But before we get to that, I, I got to tell you guys, MXPX is playing live this week coming up. Furnace Fest, MXPX at Furnace Fest, September 22nd. That's Friday night, kicking it off. First night of the festival. Come early, come hang, come see us, come ha check out the merch booth. We are. It's rumored that we are going to do a free meet and greet, a free signing uh, at Furnace Fest. So um, stay, keep your ears and eyes peeled for that. Um, and so we'll be there. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Going to be awesome. Um, and then uh, next month, um, October 21 and 22, Las Vegas, Nevada at the When We Were Young Festival. Going to be awesome. Can't wait for that. Um, I don't know exactly when we're going to play. I don't know when Goldfinger is going to play, but um, both both bands will be there. So please catch MXPX. Please show your love if you're already going to be there. And tell all your friends you're going to go see MXPX at When We Were Young Fest. All right. Tag us in all your posts and in anything. If you go to another show, still tag us. I don't care. I would love that. Um, and we have some shows, some headliners coming up. We just announced and put on sale MXPX coming back to Seattle. Saturday, December 30th, the last show of 2023 for us. Um, we're going we're gonna to just like celebrate the end of the year and celebrate the new year all together, all at once. In Seattle, December 30th, MXPX and our good friends Diesel Boy. They recently put out a new album. They've been doing some shows. They're kind of back. And we thought, you know what? Let's bring Diesel Boy with us to Seattle. It's going to be awesome. So uh, come out and see that show. It's going to be great. Tickets are on sale now, MXPX.com. And then the next week or so, um, we're down in Los Angeles, California, January 6th. That's a Saturday night. MXPX, less than Jake. Reliant K and Smoking Popes, all live, all together on one bill at the Hollywood Palladium. That's January 6th. Let's come come celebrate with us. Like, we're going to kick off 2024, kick off the new era uh, of, uh, you know, the Find A Way tour, Find A Way home tour. And uh, I'm excited for that. And, and, of course, people that can't make it to those shows and all that, I strongly recommend you try. But we will be announcing more shows, um, international, East Coast, Canada, maybe Europe, maybe UK even. You know, um, We're working on all that stuff, so they won't all come at once. Uh, Midwest, I know people want to see us in the Midwest too. Um, somebody probably wants to see us down in Texas or Florida or something. So we'll, we'll get down to those parts, those extremities. Um, I appreciate you guys. Uh, anybody interested in vinyl, merchandise, T-shirts, um, you know, nobody does it better than Iron Maiden here. I'm wearing my Iron Maiden shirt. But uh, MXPX, we got a bunch of T-shirts, a bunch of really cool stuff in the site right now. 
Um, it's a mom and pop store, small business. We appreciate your support. You, you guys really keep us rolling. So mxpx.com, check out all the variants we have. And we're always ironing out the kinks. So it's getting, the service gets better and better. And um, <laughs> mistakes will be made, but the service gets better and better, I tell you. So thank you guys for your love and support and being positive. Thanks for staying positive about this record because it's been so much fun. Uh, so let's get, let's get to your voicemails, right? Let's get to it. Let's find out what we got going. I just got to find the voicemail. Here it is. Here's the first voicemail. Hey, Mike, it's Derek here in Lexington, Kentucky. I've been loving the new album. I've listened to it, uh, I think I'm on my sixth run through at this point. And, man, you know what? I love that last track. Uh, mistakes will be made. I think that's a, that's a serious, serious banger. Love it. Anyway, I want to tell you, uh, cause I forgot a couple of weeks ago I had this dream that I was, uh, that I was, I guess it was in the past. It was like, let's say it was 1998. And, uh, I saw, I was watching TV and it was a commercial, uh, for Blockbuster Video. And it was like saying, hey, the new MXPX video game is for rent. And it was like a fucking extra punk. It's some kind of platformer kind of game, you know, like Mario or whatever, but with him. So, hey, has anybody ever approached you about doing some kind of MXPX themed video game? You know, maybe like the Journey game on Atari or, um, I don't know, I'm blanking. Not like Rock Band, but, you know, a character-driven video game. Maybe with Pokemon Edge Punk or maybe with you guys, I don't know. Uh, that'd be kind of neat, wouldn't it? Uh, so, yeah. See ya. Thanks. Hey, Derek, thanks for your call, man. And thanks for, for uh, showing some love and, and naming a song. I like specifics, you know, here, here one of your favorite songs is Mistakes Will Be Made. I appreciate that. Um, definitely one of my favorites. So the video game question to yes, uh, we have talked about doing a video game with the Pokenetcha Punk, but we've actually done a lot of video games just having our music in the video game. So there's just been a ton of those. But yeah, it's next level when you're actually having a video game based on the band or based on the mascot, the Pokenetcha Punk. Um, I talked to, I have a friend actually that works for Microsoft. And at the time, he worked in the video game division, and he wanted to do something on the side. And and I was like, yeah, man, let's do it. But, you know, it was just kind of too early, and it took probably too much time. And I didn't really understand what needed to be done either, but it didn't really happen. So the idea was there. It didn't actually happen. But I would love to do that and, you know, to, like, restart that idea or you know come up with a brand new idea it doesn't it, the idea there was a bunch of different ideas it wasn't like we had started working on the game or anything but um yeah i'm sure he just got busy at work and with life and everything and it just was you know there wasn't much upside for him to keep working on it but i don't think he ever started that's the thing is you know you have ideas and you don't have to like do every idea that you have you don't have to actually do it but the ones that you do that that, that warrant your time really end up usually end up being really great so if there's any video game developers out there that that can do some you know rendering and drawing and really just can develop you know those kinds of things i don't even know what i'm saying um contact me but i mean maybe not right now because we're in the middle of <laughs> we're in the middle of you know talking about our new album and promoting our new album and stuff like that but i but i do I, I do have interest in that, and um, I'd be open to to some ideas. Now, you know, there's there's so many different things you could do. You could have just a poking at your punk, do some sort of Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers style obstacle course where you know the poking at your punk's going through his day, and he's got his headphones on, and he's jamming MXPX, and and. Uh, you know, the bully from life in general tries to, like, roll a trash can in front of him, and he has to jump over it. And, you know, there could be fun stuff, right? So I, I hear you, and I'm with you. So video game developers, get at me. Or get at somebody. Get at a booking agent about it, maybe. <laughs> All right, next call. Let's find it. Let's find it. Here we go. 
Hey, Mike, what's up, man? It's uh, Ryan from New Jersey. I'm a longtime, lifelong MXPX fan and listener of the show. Um, yeah, man, you guys hit it out of the park with this record. Absolutely love it. I've been listening to it nonstop since it came out. So I just wanted to ask you, uh, and sorry if you've already spoken about this. I know you've been doing a lot of press and live streams and stuff. So if I missed it, I apologize, and you can delete this. <laughs> but I wanted to ask about Sunrise, uh, the little instrumental track on the album, which uh, I do love. But I was just sort of curious on the thought process of how, you know, like a one minute or so instrumental ends up on a record. Was these, you know, was this just sort of like a riff lying around, a chord progression that you love, but you just didn't have a melody to or couldn't come up with lyrics or was it sort of an intentional thing that you guys set out to do in instrumental? Um, yeah, man, just sort of curious, like, what the thought process behind that was, how that ended up on the album. Again, I love it. Just curious on, on your process. Uh, in full transparency, I'm actually putting a record together right now. I do it with my wife, and uh, we're sort of toying around with doing a little instrumental as well, uh, about a minute and change. Not sure if it's going to happen or not, but, um, yeah, just wondering, man. Uh, all the best. Hope to see you when you're next in New York. New Jersey area. Keep it up. We love you guys. And again, uh, congrats and well done on the record. All right. Take care. Bye. That's a rad, rad question. I like that question. Thanks. Thanks for calling in, Ryan. Let me get to it. Let me, let me, sorry. I just like played automatically. I wanted to play a minute of sunrise so people can kind of get an idea of what it is in case you haven't heard it or you don't know name titles of songs, you know, things like that. This is on our new album, Find a Way Home. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it. Um, so I don't get flagged or anything. Flagged from my own song I wrote. So, and then I'll talk about it. So yeah, that's that's sunrise, and. Yeah, I can totally understand why there would be questions of what. So, what's the thought process of putting this song on the record? You know, so let me just take you back to like us in practice, us coming up with the songs for this record. Um, I, I really, once I get writing and once we get working on tunes, that inspires me to write more songs. So, this was a song I wrote mid mid or towards the end of the writing process of the album. We're, we've we've already got a bunch of tunes, and at this point, I'm just kind of like, I've got so many ideas and so many melodies in my head flowing. It, it's one of those kinds of things, you know, um, where I just have to write, you know, and so like... When I came up with Sunrise, it wasn't a preconceived idea of like, hey, we're going to put an instrumental song on this album. It was literally, oh, I have a song, I have an idea for an instrumental track. And I didn't realize it was an instrumental track until, until I had this, really this first part. And I was just like, you know, I don't, I, I kind of just like this. I don't need vocals on it or anything. Like, I just like the idea of this, you know everything you hear on guitar is, is what I made up in my head, you know, and, and, and sang it. And then we turned it into a guitar part. So like, that's literally how I wrote the song was like, was, um, coming up with the melody, like, which is all that. And then the progression is a little different from our normal kind of progression. So, but why put it on the album? That's a great question. The, the, the answer is, we didn't think we would ever put this out as a single, like just put it out. We thought maybe we just, it would be part of a collection of songs and sure it could just live as, uh, an extra song that fell off the truck, you know, that, that never got put on an album. Um, but as we were, as we were sort of like, we had recorded all the songs. We're like, let's record this, you know, just to have it. It's a short song. And, the thought process was we were really having trouble getting from the middle to, of the album to the end of the album in a way that felt right. And so with the sequencing of the songs, there's a few different ways that work, but ultimately there's only really one way that works 
you know, if you do it, you know, if you if you put, um, you know, that's why Stay Up All Night is song, is track six is because it's the only way it really fits on the album. And Ra Ready to Rage, same. It's a palate cleanser. It's like a reset. But it's like track one of the second side of the album, right? As a track one of the first side of the album, that would be terrible, I think, because none of the other songs really sound like that. And so, like, I felt like Not Today was perfect. You know, it was like the most, even though it's not technically the most MXPX song, it's a little different from our, our average song. I think Mountains to Climb might be the most MXPX song on this album, but um, that's for everybody's, everybody has their own opinion about that. But Not Today just felt like a great way to start it, to get the energy up, to get people hooked. It's got a great chorus. It's got the, the best bridge on the album. Um, I mean, that's opinion too, so I, I don't know. Maybe it's not the best bridge. There's a lot of good bridges on the album. Uh, I'd say, you know, Stay Up All Night has the best bridge on the album too. So um, it just depends on who you are, right? And so with Sunrise, we needed a way to bridge Mountains to Climb, or something like that. Because, I mean, there was a few different options. But once we put Sunrise in there, it all made way more sense to us. So it was it was a way to, one, use the song where we felt like we're never going to not... We're never going to use an instrumental just as a single. Like, it kind of just doesn't make sense to us. So it has to be for a reason. And so we could even play this song Sunrise live, you know, to bridge a few things, you know, um, just use it as a bridge, use it as a, a palate cleanser as well. Um, those are, I mean, those are psychological mechanics of like entertainment, you know, in some ways, but, but, um, everybody can take it how they want to take it for, for us. Sunrise was just like kind of a, a simple, cool idea that we hadn't really done anything like that ever in our career. I mean, there, there's songs that sound like that, that we do, but they all have vocals to them. They all have other parts to them. So like, um, I think coming off of can't keep waiting, realizing that people liked that instrumental part at the end of can't keep waiting. People really enjoyed that. It gave us a little bit more confidence to just say, screw it. Let's just put this on the album. It's, it's not a, it's not a bad song at all. It's a great song. The fact that it doesn't have lyrics, who cares? Right? Like, it's, it's time for you to just sit there and think about life. It just gives you a second to just think your own thoughts. And I think we all need that at times, right? That's my, that's my story. But um, I hope I covered all the aspects of that. That was a great question. I, I love that. And, um, you know, another aspect of Sunrise being an anomaly is I think most people would have thought if we did another instrumental it would sound more like Theme Fiasco, which we love. We love Theme Fiasco, and it sounds nothing like most MXPX songs, but that's what's so great about this band that we have here and this music that we've created over the years. It's, it's, uh, some people, some haters might say it sounds all the same, but the, the real ones know, you know that there are nuances and there's this era and this sound and this style of MXPX song, so... I appreciate you guys, and I and I love that that uh, that you guys are noticing things like, huh? I wonder why they did put a <laughs> instrumental song. So I encourage you, do what you got to do with with your song, um, release it now, release it as a single. Maybe that would be cool for you. Um, maybe you want to do an EP of instrumentals. I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't do great. I think one instrumental in a sea of songs with lyrics. We can't we can't go wrong. Now, I'm going to be interested to see how many people listen to that compared to the songs right around that, because the data will tell us in time. We just gotta we just gotta be patient. All right, let's get to the next call. Hey, what's up, Mike? Uh, this is Cameron calling from Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, just checking out the new record, and uh, I love it. Uh, excited for the uh, second live stream uh, tonight. And I just had a question for you. Uh, actually, two questions. Uh, the first one is, 
Um, are you permanently back in Bremerton now, or are you still in Waco sometimes? Because it seems like um, I listen to your podcast weekly, and it uh, seems like you are uh, always in Bremerton. But I'm just curious about that. Uh, the second thing I wanted to know is when you write songs like uh, Cautious Optimistic, are those like true to life, or do you just write lyrics um, that sound good to you? I was just wondering if those were uh, like really your thoughts or not. So anyway, uh, congrats on the new record, man. It kicks ass. I've already listened to it two times, and it's only uh, 9.12 in the morning. So all right, take care. Bye. That's rad. Thanks, Cameron. Um, yeah, dude. Waco, Bremerton, easy, easy answer here. Um, we go back and forth. So, yes, I still live in Bremerton, and I still live in Waco. Um, but work and all that, you know, for me being work, work is MXPX and music. If I am if I have a heavy workload, then I'm mostly in Bremerton. So it's kind of it's kind of dictated by that for the most part, um, although my family sometimes – doesn't let themselves be dictated by that. So <laughs> I might be, you know, traveling back and forth by myself, kind of. But that's that's the life of entertainment. That's the life of a creative, outside-the-box kind of guy. And it's always been like that for me. So for me, it's literally just life. And uh, I appreciate it. But, but um, yeah, no complaints from me. Um, so, yeah, back and forth. And, you know, we we definitely love hanging out in Texas. But... Te- like in Texas, I'm. Uh, it's more like I'm doing cerebral work. I, I'm like maybe writing and planning. I'm not doing the things as much because I need to be in the studio to do the things or in the in the live stream room or whatever it is. But a lot can be done in Texas, just not everything. Um, now, your question about cautious, optimistic, or other lyrics like that is that true to life? Um, Let's get into it. I think it's a mix. I think nothing, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could literally write a literal true-to-life lyric, but I think things get in there that aren't necessarily true-to-life, and but it all comes from somewhere. It's not always my life. It could be like somebody else's life, somebody that I saw that I thought was cra- you know, crazy or funny or this or that or, yeah. So it's all influenced from real life somewhere somehow now let me play a little bit of cautious optimistic so people know this track four off the new album let me tell you something about me now telling a story i'm very wary when i go out <laughs> i look both ways six times before i cross the street i need a meeting just to put shoes on my feet all right let's just start with that um i'm very wary when i go out um, not really. No, I mean, I, you know, we have a joke, me and me and my buddy, Mike Moen, we always joke about like, cause me and him are both a little paranoid about things sometimes. Like I was looking over our shoulder and, uh, his wife, Andy too. Uh, we're all laughing about this and basically just saying like, you know, who doesn't get stabbed in the neck? People that are looking out in case they get stabbed in the neck. You know? <laughs> because on the streets of Bremerton, you're usually safe. But now and again, some random person will just stab somebody in, in the neck or whatever on the street. So, I mean, I'm sure it happens in most towns. Right, people? Right? Am I right? Um, so, no, I'm not super. I mean, I think I think of things like that, and that makes it like that's a real-life example of it is real life. It's a conversation I'm having, but am I actually psycho? that psycho to where I'm like looking both ways six times before I leave. No, not really. You know, it's the OCD thing. I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm making an extreme example of some thoughts that I have, but, um, you know, when it comes to, I, 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 what, what was, was the other lyric right there? Let me go back. Oh, what did I do? Oh yeah, I need a meeting just to put shoes on my feet. I want to. Okay, so no, I don't actually need to have a meeting with somebody to put shoes on my feet. It's a metaphor, obviously, you know, for like needing to like talk to ask 
three different people their advice before doing something really simple and every day. And it's just a metaphor for the fact that a lot of people are like that. A lot of people um, just can't handle life on their own, you know? So uh, more of a joke, really. Let's keep going. Let's, this is fun. Always planted for the very worst. I like my... I assume the best, but always planning for the very worst. I like my numbers odd, my Venmo balance even, and my bad luck reversed. That's a clever line, but uh, it is true. Uh, I do like, I do like uh, my numbers odd. I don't like even numbers. I like odd numbers. Um, now, if you hand me a thousand dollars, I'm not going to complain. I, I'm good with with an even thousand dollars. One k is good. But just some things I prefer odd numbers. And it I don't know why. It just feels better in my mind to not be so... Like, I'm like the opposite of OCD. Like, I'm OCD to not be too on the nose, to not be too... Per like, I don't want to be... You know, like, I want to be a little off kilter. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if I even care about that. But I'm just trying to, like, figure out why I do that. And I'm not sure I know. Um, you're my therapist right now, so I'm I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> uh, um, let, let's continue. Okay, who doesn't want their bad luck reversed, right? Let's go to the second verse. All right, here we go. Second verse. Don't wanna risk it. I always chew my food. I always chew my food before I eat That's it. true. I need a memo for a memo just to read it. I wash my hands and then I rinse repeat it. I brush my teeth these nights so I don't get cavities. And I always bring a jacket just in case I freeze. All right. I mean, I think most of those things are pretty true about me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that that's the thing is like, um, I always chew my food before I eat it. I mean, you, yeah, it's a stupid line, but it's like, it's so funny how many people recite that line. They just, it just sounds cool. It just sounds, a lot of times I write, like you were saying, did you write something to sound cool? Yeah, kind of, because... But you want to say, I'm trying to say something, and I'm, and I feel like I am saying something, even though it sounds cool and it's true and it's obviously true. That's the whole point. I'm trying to say is like, I'm, I'm like, all these things wrapped up in one. These, these like, these contradictions, you know. Um, people that are cautious usually aren't optimistic. They're not thinking of the best things in life. They're thinking of all the worrisome things in life. So I'm, what I'm saying is I kind of am both. Like, I am so positive as a person for the most part, yet I can be very, very, very anxious, cautious. Uh, you know, all the things you don't think I am normally, I can beat those. So um, I would shoot my food before I eat it. Uh, I need a memo for a memo just to read it. Now... Yes, because like when I see a lot of like directions or a lot of things that I don't, I'm not familiar with, it's like seeing the matrix, right? It's all the, the, the green numbers. But after you really can understand it, then it's woman in a red dress, guy walking a dog, you know? <laughs> so, so that, that's me. So that, you know, um, I feel like, again, I'm being a little hyperbolic. Is that even the right way to say that? Hyperbolic? Hyper, hyperbolic? No. It's hyperbole. But if you say it in the olic way, I think you change it up to say hyperbolic. But I could be wrong, so somebody call in and tell me. Um, so anyway, back to the memo for the memo. Just read it. Um, I wash my hands, and then I rinse, repeat it. I mean... There's times when you just want to be clean and you just keep washing your hands, right? Doesn't everybody feel like you just can't get the blood, <laughs> the blood off? I'm kidding. 
Um, again, just a fun line, an obvious line. Um, that line actually changed a few different times. It wasn't even always uh, wash my hands and then I rinse repeat it. It was a few different things, which I can't even remember right now. But the 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 hand line I like. Um, I brush my teeth each night so I don't get cavities. Honestly, I felt like I'm writing this for the kids at this point. This is like uh, we're get you know we're washing our hands, we're brushing our teeth. Um, that was me just going with the flow of the the idea of that verse. Honestly, um, yes, I do brush my teeth each, each night, um, and mainly so that my breath don't stink. But the the obvious um, upside is also less cavities. Um, not gonna say I've never had a cavity. I've had, I've had too many, but mostly in adulthood. After after free will comes into play and you stop brushing your teeth all the time. But I think it was more the candy, a lot of candy in my early twenties. All right, you guys. Um, I could go on and on, but I don't know if you want me to. Uh, <laughs> I do bring a jacket just about everywhere I go because I'm always cold, and. Um, or I would think I might be cold. It's, it's again, being sort of like cautious. Uh, that's true. That's real. And for those, a lot of people on the, on. let's get to the bridge. Let me just, it's my podcast. I can still continue talking about this song, can't I? So I'm going to get to the bridge and we'll talk about that and then we'll wrap this, this up. Here we go. Bridge. I always use my hands to make the symbol for a sunny day. Too scared to step out on the ice, I'll save it for some bu- So right there, I, I always use my hands to make the symbol for a sunny day. I don't even know if this is actually the symbol for a sunny day, but I I looked it up one day when I was writing the song. I was like, what's... And, and I came up with this. Because I wanted to say that because I basically... Do, I don't do that... Literally, I don't always make the symbol for a sunny day, but I kind of do that in my life just in general. Like I I, I do things like that, um, whether it's just today uh, I was at home, my daughter was there, wife and son went to the store. Like, Let's go. You want to go on a walk? And so we went on a walk together, just me and her. And, and that to me is the same as making a symbol for a sunny day. You know, it's, it's do something every day to symbolize life is good. Even if it's not good, you, if you do that once a day, then there's one part of your day that's good. So whatever that may be, absolutely does not have to be a walk. It can be sitting behind your computer and FaceTiming with uh, a loved one or a friend or um, just messaging somebody, you know, even if they don't get back to you right away. That'd be good. Um, all right. what? This is almost done. Yeah, these are all, that's all just lyrics. Um, yeah, I mean, this the sunny day thing, I think, is the main thing on that. I always make the symbol, for, I always use my hands and make the symbol for a sunny day. Just scared to step out on the ice. I watch a lot of Alone, um, the show, TV show called Alone. And they're always, you know, once you get into the winter part towards the end of the show, snow's coming down, ice. I've read a lot of books about um, Alaskan, you know, dog sledding. And, you know, if those that have been listening to this podcast definitely know <laughs> I love do- dog sledding movies and books, stories, and anything about surviving the wilderness of Alaska. And, and you would think that I like to be out in the wilderness. And I do, but I don't like to be cold like we talked about before. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. All right. So uh, I think that line from the ice honestly just came from the influence of watching that TV show alone and wa- and reading all these books by Gary Paulson and, and um, you know, all that. So, all right. That was a great question. Thank you for calling. Let me, let me go. Let's do two more. Let's do two more voicemails about Find a way home. Thank you guys for calling in. The number is 360-830-6660. Call in right now. Pause it and call in if it's fresh on your mind or call in right after the episode. And please, I'd love to hear what you think about Find a Way Home, what your favorite song is, what hits you, anything like that. 
Here's, uh, here's another voicemail. What's up, Mike? This is Jesse from St. Louis. Uh, man, just wanted to say the new album is absolutely killer. I was blown away by it. Uh, safe to say I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it is, and it's, uh, it's fantastic start to finish. So great work on the new album. Just wanted to talk about the song Ready to Rage. Uh, definitely has a strong Bad Religion feel to it, which Bad Religion's my favorite band of all time, so I'm absolutely loving that song. And I uh, was just wondering if you guys kind of had that thought in your head when you were recording it that, hey, this sounds a lot like Bad Religion in a good way. Um, I just haven't heard you guys put out a song with uh, quite that aggression, speed, and uh, kind of like ferocity. It's a uh, killer track, man. So, yeah, I was just wondering about that song and uh, if you took some Bad Religion influence uh, when you were writing it. Thanks a lot, Mike. Bye. Dude, thanks for calling in, Jesse. Appreciate it, brother. Dude, Ready to Rage is rad. I love it. Um, everybody seems to love it. Uh, Bad Religion is one of the all-time great bands for sure. Absolutely huge influence on us. I would say Ready to Rage is harder than Bad Religion is usually, honestly. Uh, and it's harder than we usually are, too. So, I mean, I'm not saying that as a dig. I'm saying the song is harder and tougher than most Bad Religion songs. Um, they don't do too much of that bridge, like our breakdown bridge. It's more of like in the hardcore band territory. That's my opinion. Um, when we were coming up with the song, when I wrote the song, when I, when we were practicing the song, I mean, to me, it's honestly more like Secret Weapon than than Bad Religion. But it is... I mean, we're influenced by Bad Religion, for sure. Bad Religion, Rancid, No Effects, all those those bands. Um, obviously, Ramones, The Clash, Black Flag, The Descendants are huge. So, like, we're influenced by punk rock in general. So, yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. Um, the song is faster than most Bad Religion songs, too, and it's not even close to the fastest song on our new record. I think Undone, the song right after that's much faster than than Ready to Rage, but it's... It's not as heavy, so it doesn't feel as, you know, fast. I guess it can more gallops along, but it is fast, very fast, uh, tempo-wise. Um, so it is funny how people perceive certain tracks um, compared to the others. Um, but for me, it's just an extension of who MXPX always has been. It's just, we're just getting better and better at what we do, honestly. I think... Uh, people that refuse to see it are just, I mean, people have nostalgia towards the old records or whatever. So most people are even uh, kind of letting that go and going, okay, I love those old records, but man, this is, this new record really fits right alongside everything. And, and I think that's what we really try to do is make a record that doesn't alienate any group of MXPX fans whatsoever. You'll find something here you'll like. And, um, and yeah, I'm just, I, I'm I'm really blown away too. I didn't I knew it was going to be as good as it is, but uh, I'm very very happy that people are agreeing with me. So and us, you know, the whole band really feels really strongly about this record. So um, I have not too many doubts that 99 percent of the people listening to this podcast regularly and this episode in general have heard the record. Now there's always going to be fans out there that just haven't heard. I just haven't listen to it yet i haven't gotten around to it for different reasons personal reasons whatever things you know i just haven't had time i'm waiting for the vinyl to come in i'm i don't you know i want to sit down with it when i can really take it in you know whatever those are good reasons i feel like but um maybe they just don't like our new stuff or didn't like our last album whatever it is hey i'm not concerned about those literal few people like it's like so few uh because just seeing all the positive positivity, not just on our own MXPX channels and, and pages you see, but just other people. Like, you guys, thank you so much for, for getting out there. And you, when you're on another site, another Facebook group, or this or that, letting people know that new MXPX is fire. Oh, Find a Way Home from MXPX is so good. Go check it out. Like, people have actually been doing that. And if you haven't, and you felt like maybe you should, Hey, I'm I'm here to encourage you because that really really makes a difference. It always makes a bigger difference than getting some ad, you know, in your face or something like that. And if you've been seeing ads from us, awesome. 
you know, because it m means the ads are kind of working. But um, we're doing everything we can to get the word out on this record, and we're really proud of it. And there's going to be a few people that get sick of that. But the most most of the people will only see these ads or only see me talking about this album once or twice. And to really get people to, like, get into it, you got to tell them way more. you, you got to kind of keep telling them. That's why he advertisers you know in in the real world beat people over the head with their products because people are just so over it and i get it and i am too as a consumer as a as a person in the world it just gets old being sold to all the time so for us we're trying to do it in a different way we're just trying to get out there and tell our story talk to people about the album about the songs and and try to connect personally with other you know other friends of ours that have great audiences too. So yeah, it's, it's been working and, and it's been going great, but it's, we are a long way from the end of the road. We are so far from being done promoting the record and being done. Um, you know, I guess, you know, I'm going to go on pot. I'm going to go on more podcasts. I'm going to be doing more lives. And, um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is <laughs> I hope you're not sick of me yet because I'm not going anywhere. All right, let's do one more. You guys have been awesome listening, hanging, calling in. I appreciate it. All right, one more one more voicemail. Uh, hey, Mike, this is Nash from Northern Colorado. I uh, hope all is well. I uh, just wanted to call in recently on the podcast. You said that uh, you were going to be doing a podcast consisting of you know, fans' response to the album. Um, I think the album is amazing. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit more specific than that, though. Um, specifically, my experience with uh, the first single, Stay Up All Night, um, both the video and the song itself. Um, I have an immediate family member who is uh, currently in stage four cancer, um, and, and unfortunately, things are not going well. Um, and that's been something that I've been, been working through, um, my relationship with this person. Uh, and in the video, there's the parent and the child, um, that are, are awaiting the results, uh, for the, for the cancer tests. And, um, you know, that, that really struck me seeing that, um, in my own personal experience with, with this family member, uh, things have been turbulent, uh, and we've been hurtful to each other in various ways. Um, but, after watching this video and then hearing the song itself, um, it really has pushed me and inspired me to try and fix this relationship with that person uh, before it's too late. Um, and, you know, so, so that, that song and video specifically hit me really hard. Um, and I appreciate your ability to, to provide all different types of content like that, you know, both fun songs and songs that go a lot deeper uh, and really kind of get in there and make you feel a lot of different things uh so thanks for taking my call i uh, hope all's well and take care <coughs> excuse me nash thanks for the call wow that's heavy and that really helps solidify give solidarity to what we're trying to do in this band with this with this album but just the band and not just the album the band the songs um I've always tried to do a lot of fun stuff mixed with going deeper and going deep is hard. It's hard, especially because you're just so vulnerable with putting your deep thoughts down for the public, you know, as a songwriter, but hearing that, you know, you're getting something truly valuable in life from it is kind of mind blowing. Cause it's, it's a punk, you know, we're a punk rock band. You know, and that's a great reminder, not only just to me, but to anybody listening that, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how big or small you are, you know, each person individually can make a huge different uh, difference in, in your life, in the lives of others. And honestly, the most important thing in, in life is family. And we don't choose our family a lot of times. And, uh, but I think that's part of life is like, this is, this is the family I was born into. And, uh, obviously there's caveats to that, but I just love hearing that a song, a song could in a video, cause the video is, is definitely powerful. Um, 
That means a lot. Wow. You know, I would love to hear more stories about songs like this. It doesn't have to be this song necessarily, but um, it just gives me a different understanding of what's going on, you know, because I'm just a dude writing songs in my room in in the sometimes it's Waco sometimes here in the studio in the back on the back porch up in the control room here on the couch I mean wherever right like I'm just sitting here trying to come up with the thoughts and feelings and put those feelings down on paper to make some somewhat uh, some sense you know they make sense to me you know so I think what I love is when they make sense to you, you know, that, that makes me feel amazing, you know, and, and it's not, I know this is a heavy subject, so it's, um, it's not meant to build me up, but I mean, it certainly, certainly gives me, gives me hope that what we're doing matters. Um, and like I said, I think the most important thing is is just each person's individual life and family and relationships that go beyond that family, of course. I mean relationships, that's that's the most important thing. And if you and if you're somebody that's just like chilling by yourself all the time, hey, I'm there too. I'm I have relationships, but I'm like by myself a lot and I sit there with my thoughts and a lot of times I don't have time to sit with thoughts and you know you, you need hey we need this video edited or this or that you know and I'm just doing the, the work the grind work um, so yeah these moments honestly I cherish hearing that that it I, I think these things are going to happen to people no matter what there's going to be strained relationships there's going to be there's going to be um, things that go wrong in life, whether or not I write a song about it, it's going to happen, right? So the fact that I can write a song and it helps a few people with that situation, that's going to happen regardless of whether I wrote that song, but it helps them navigate their life in a way that's just slightly easier. And maybe easier isn't even the right word. Maybe it's slight, It's slightly, there's more understanding um, on the other side, like going, okay, I, I, I get perspective on this because I heard a song that gave me a few different thoughts that I didn't have in my head before. And, and so like, that's all, that's all I could ever ask for when it comes to writing songs, being creative, putting things out into the world is, um, I guess we're all trying to change the world in, in some small way. Right. And, and changing it for the better is hands down, always the answer, you know, it, it doesn't matter how much you change the world for the better, just any amount. I think that's maybe one of one of many uh, keys to life, right? Because I can't say that that's the only one, but it's, it certainly feels like it's one. So, all right. Find a way home. Thank you guys so much for your stories, for your 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 calls and your questions and your comments um the one about sunrise was awesome uh the one about uh cautious optimistic was really fun um and of course this one about stay up all night thank you so much for listening to that song and and for finding a place for that song in your life because ultimately that's what we're here for is to you know make songs and they find homes uh in your life and not every song is the same for everybody so before you tear one down and build up another, just remember somebody else has that opposite opinion of you or not of you of, of, of the song. So, and that's like that across the board with most things in life. Um, it gets easier if you kind of like have a little perspective and, um, and stay positive. All right. That's my lecture. I'm going to, I'm going to end it there. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. I don't know what's happening next week. For the podcast, might do more voicemails. I got certainly have a backlog of voicemails that that were before the album came out, and I just couldn't get to them all. Um, I might get to some of them. I might still do some, but uh, I would encourage you guys to please call in again, talk about the new album and the new songs, because that's what I want to keep talking about for a while. Um, and of course, I want to include you guys, and I will do 
a Music Monday and get your new stuff out there talked about as well. I always want to support you guys in the community. And if you're not already part of the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group, please come join us. The group is growing a ton every day and it's a really, you know, it's a good place to be podcast wise. If you're on Instagram, of course, follow me over there. Um, and then, uh, all the other platforms. I'm finally on TikTok as well. Just, uh, MXPXPX and then, uh, my career TD on TikTok. If you want to see quirkier, some of the same videos, but quirkier editing, <laughs> it's just, it's just a weirder, wackier style over on TikTok. But, but honestly, it's just another community of people and, and they're, they're, they're all us. So, uh, I appreciate all of you. And uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. So one reminder real quick, um, mxpx.com for vinyl, merch, all of that. We're going to be playing live Furnace Fest th this Friday, September 22. Uh, we'll be at When We Were Young. We'll be uh, tickets are on sale for Seattle show at the Showbox. That's December 30th. It's a Saturday night with Diesel Boy. And then the next week, kicking off 2024 in Los Angeles, California. We're playing the Hollywood Palladium, MXPX. Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. Tickets on sale now. Don't wait, because those are moving. You don't want to miss out on that show. That show might not ever happen again, and I, I assume it won't, but just get there. It's going to be fun. All right. Shout out to Bob McKnight, editor, producer, all-around great guy, um, sometimes steals from work. Uh, <laughs> that's a joke, obviously. I'm, I'm kind of kidding. But... Uh, Love you, buddy, and thanks for doing what you do, um, and thanks you all. All right, peace out.